November 11, 1930. A bread line stretches for a mile in the Bronx. In Brooklyn, a girl is born to unemployed immigrants. And in Manhattan, Albert Einstein, in one of his more prosaic moments, patents a home refrigerator in the midst of the greatest depression the U.S. had ever known. Of all the events of November 11th, just one would send ripples beyond the end of the decade. The girl born to immigrants would go on to unlock the mysteries of one of life's elemental building blocks, spark an engineering revolution well on its way to changing the modern world, and rise to global prominence as the queen of carbon science. Well, I had an uh, unusual uh, childhood, I, I imagine, for maybe not so unusual. Uh, well, will you decide yourself? Mildred Dresselhaus began her ascension to the carbon throne early in life with a hand-me-down violin and a scholarship to the prestigious Greenwich House Music School, one at just four years old. But Dresselhaus's talents extended beyond music, into the sphere of academia. With a natural gift for numbers and science, as well as some help from her friends at Greenwich, Dresselhaus found her way out of poverty to a Fulbright scholarship in the UK, and eventually to the University of Chicago, where she befriended famous physicist and Franklin Institute medalist Enrico Fermi. I used to walk to work with him. He was a big influence. The only female student in the physics department, Dresselhaus had to be strong and resourceful when necessary. Just ask her about the time she took apart the world's first nuclear reactor to make superconducting wire and helium for her PhD research. <laughs> that same fearlessness would help Dresselhaus attain trailblazer status in 1960, when she decided to do something the rest of the physics community failed to take seriously, break down one of the strongest materials on Earth carbon. If you've ever used a pencil, you've worked with carbon in the form of graphite. Chunks of graphite, like the point of this pencil, are made up of layers, and tiny flakes fall easily away with only a small amount of pressure. But get this, a single sheet of graphite, called graphene, has unparalleled strength. Even though it's only one carbon atom thick, Dresselhaus wanted to know why. Going back to my background, I was always looking for frontiers. I still look for frontiers. Dresselhaus began a three-decade journey in the lab, studying the quantum properties of carbon, detailing the way the electrons behave in a variety of environments. She did this first with graphene, and later with tiny rolled-up graphene cylinders called nanotubes. Her insights would lay the foundation for the suite of carbon-based supermaterials poised to change almost every major industry. Here's a peek at that future. Layered into a single sheet no thicker than a piece of cellophane, graphene could easily support the weight of an elephant. Coming soon, new ultralight planes and spaceships, as well as radical new architectural marvels like taller, greener buildings, even elevators that travel into space. Because of Dresselhaus, we know that graphene conducts electricity much more efficiently than copper and while weighing only a fraction of it. Imagine a smartphone that rolls up like a piece of paper. Or how about an electric car that charges more quickly than you could fill a tank with gas? It didn't take long for the physics community to get on board with Dresselhaus. As far back as the 1960s, academia realized the potential impact of her groundbreaking work. In response, the MIT physics community found within itself the will to do something equally unprecedented. And so in 1968, at 38 years old, Mildred Dresselhaus became the first tenured female professor of physics at MIT. Some of the ideas that I try to leave my students with, if you somehow manage your time properly, and that's an important thing to learn how to do anyway, um, then sometimes you can find time to do uh, crazy stuff that, that might change the world.